Yeah, the main uh, interesting event this week from a viewer uh, perspective is that we had a bad promotion. Um, we we set uh, Dirt Viewer 519 to be the release viewer. Um, it turned out that it had some uh, serious issues that we wanted to um, wanted to avoid having out there. So we rolled back to the previous viewer, which was the uh, the Jelly Dolls release. Um, and in the process of doing that, we uncovered a cache corruption issue where rolling back could sometimes cause your uh, cache textures to display in strange and colorful ways that weren't what you had in mind. Um, so that wasn't great. Uh, unfortunately, we're still not really sure what's going on there because it's not something that we can reproduce consistently. Um, uh, a like I think one person internally who's tried to reproduce the the corrupted cache issue has been able to do it, and if else um, can't get the issue to happen, then you can't fix it either. So the likely next step here is that we're probably going to be kind of fully sticking with our rollback. Um, you know, any any. Um, internal branches that we had merged with with Dirt Viewer 519 are going to need to get moved back to an early state and uh, we're going to just put put 519 back into a um, back into a development state and take it from there um, so I haven't really done a full reset like this before that I recall um, doing a little bit of uh, discussion ahead of time to make sure we don't along the way but um, uh, you know, if if you're following our code base, um, uh, unfortunately, that's probably going to require you to do some similar adjustments uh, your viewers as well. So I'm sorry about that. It's uh, the problem that we're usually able to avoid, but in this case, we've uh, gotten it into kind of a, a desired state. Okay, yeah, having fixes for 5.19 would be good. I, I would, even if I'm, even if we're sure that 5.19 is completely fixed, though, um, the the corruption issue with rollback seems like a, a concern if anybody is running an older viewer and... Um, we, you know, we don't want that to happen, so we really need to understand what's causing that issue as well before we can moving forward.
Is that really a concern? I, yeah, I don't want our, our default viewer to be in a state where anyone who attempts to run a different viewer is at significant risk of getting their cache messed up. You know, since I don't really understand what happened there, um, that's that's a concern. If if we understood the parameters of it, you know, what actually caused it to happen, uh, we decided something we could. But uh, you know, in spite of it not being very easy for us to reproduce in house, we did get a whole lot of bug reports about this, which suggests that it's uh, definitely catching some eyeballs. Different cache by default. Uh, you mean uh, third-party viewers or other uh, previous releases of, of the Second Life viewer? Yeah, that's a good point. I probably shouldn't be worrying about people who switch back and forth between, you know, Firestorm and, and Second Life or whatever. But um, still, we have quite a few uh, active viewer releases of our own as well. And those those are all going to share the same uh, space. Yeah, I, I was mostly thinking if there are another viewer, it's like another another previous build of Second Life. But um, yeah, it's a good point that the own space, hopefully. So probably going to be seeing stuff going out on Monday. Um, we're still kind of discussing process stuff now. But if you're uh, if you're keeping an eye on that stuff, I think a lot of the uh, branch pointers are going to change. Yeah, well, we do have a test for uploading textures back. It's just that there was a it was a size issue. As textures above a certain size threshold were failing. I think a test just wasn't wasn't exercising that. I'm I'm less surprised that there's an issue with caching mesh assets because um, we've we've had uh, historically a lot of issues with that. But yeah, it is. Uh, we've had we've had caches in our system for ten years that turned out they weren't. But uh, yeah, that's not good. We uh, we should have caught that one. Yeah, and the you know the cache corruption on rollback thing, uh, you know, is is not good. We we do the, the problem is it just doesn't occur reliably. You know, we do internal testing with switching between different versions of the viewer and had you know many times before this went out, uh, but you know for some reason our internal testing wasn't uh, wasn't good at triggering whatever conditions lead to that. Uh, Beck, I came in a little bit late. Uh, we're talking about the cache issue. We don't have that in our QA, do we? Oh, okay. 
Yep, that's right. You so had me pretty scared. Oh, I see. Well, by the time we get... So, uh, hi, Veer. Hi, guys. Um, we're... Uh, so, uh, historically, we had... I would just email Oz. Um, and um, so I thought I'd show up, let you guys know we're in a final QA cycle in case SP folks on my team didn't already say that. Um, we're aiming for the week of the 15th. So generally, I would just give Oz a little heads up, let him know that uh, we had a release coming. Um, and uh, Yeah, um, if you can give me a, a shout when anything like that is going down, that would be the, the best first okay. contact. Um, I do have yeah. your email, so. Oh, uh, just fear at... Um, yeah, I think I've got you. I think I've yeah. got you on our list. Yeah. Uh, also, um, uh, for other things, so Oz and I would have communications for just sort of not necessarily code-specific related things. Um, who's my contact now for that? I had asked Oz, and he had said it was yet to be determined. Yeah, uh, I think for anything that's, uh, you know, kind of generally open source related, um, you know, at least for now, I'll be... I'll be taking that stuff over, so um, yeah, good. Probably the the right first contact anyway. Um, All right. If, if something comes up that needs to be, uh, you know, that we need to loop other people in with, then I can uh, I can do that. Um, what we were just talking about before, uh, uh, I, I don't know if you caught all of this, but we're yeah, we're going to be so rolling this is back the. the Basically, we're going to be leaving 5.19 rolled back for now, which means that we're going to be adjusting all of the branches back to their... Oh, state. I see. ...hassle for anybody else who's... Yeah, so we'll probably want to do that back. Roll it. Roll what we have back. I didn't realize ANSA had already committed it. But, uh, yeah, probably it'll be Monday before... Major changes going out. Not, not trying to rush it at the end of the week. Oh, I see. So ANSYS is going to fix it. What are the odds, uh, Veer, that you would use ANSYS fix? Uh, we'll we'll probably pull in any fixes that we have. Um, but there's there's also the concern with the cache breakage that was caused by the rollback. Um, I mean that that suggests that if we put 519 out again, then you know with with fixes, of course, um, then there's still going to be people experiencing cache corruption if they run you know older or second life fewer builds. Uh, still have at some point you're going to have to bite that bullet, aren't you? Maybe unless we can figure out what's going on and and find a workaround or a fix. Um, I mean, the only thing we know to do now is tell people to reset their cache. And, um, oh, I, I get, well, I was just thinking, because since we automatically clear cache, that would have to happen on the older viewers, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the other viewers will get expired anyway. We've got, I don't know, like a three-month window or something. But um, now there's a fair number of people out there. Well, we've certainly had a no shortage of uh, events through the years of sort of legacy viewers being wrecked by one update or another. Yeah, we, uh, you know, sometimes we do make uh, breaking changes, but we try to do it on purpose as opposed to, you know, inadvertently. <laughs> uh, Beck, I don't know. I think we'll have to ask Ansa how she wants to handle it. I suspect she'll want to leave the code in there as is, and then, well, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to talk about it in dev. Uh, so you mentioned there's a new... Uh, a uh, new Firestorm viewer coming. Which which version is that currently? Uh, so with? that brings us up to date to, uh, I believe, your latest release before this 
So Cash. five seventeen, the Jelly Dolls viewer. I I believe so. Beck, is okay. that right? Yeah, that that should be fine. No jellies. So the one before that. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, we're in our finally final um, QA. I'm surprised Willow's not here actually. Gray issue, you want them to stay colorized? So uh, Firestorm has this um, thing we do when we uh, block a an avatar, an agent, is we turn their avatar into a silhouette. Yeah, huh, well, that might be nice. So I think our blocked guys are just invisible now. I think we do still have like two shades of gray though. We've got the um, jelly dolls, and then there's people where you've deliberately selected never render this avatar. Uh, I think they show up as different grays currently, but it's uh, probably a fairly subtle distinction. Yeah, we leave putting in the other shades of gray to the uh, TPVs. <laughs> Is that the RLV viewer? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Maybe we'll render blocked avatars as like fireballs burning so much yeah. hate. Yeah, that could be fun. I, uh, it, you know, I think it would be easy to change the jelly viewer to preserve the um, the colorization we used to have. Um, the, I mean, that was a deliberate change because we basically were trying not to call attention to the. Jelly dolls, you know, the colors are, are pretty, but I think they're also kind of distracting and they're in the wrong way. But um, it always, uh, you know, add the old, add the old option or something, I guess. So you, you'll keep the single color, but just have it be something other than that, that gray.
Oh, render as outline. That's that would be cool. Or render a stick figure. Yeah, maybe they don't render people. Really, should be rendered as outlines or something. Or the jelly doll should. Uh, yeah, Beck. I don't have anything more about the static cache items. Um, we've been kind of in firefighting mood this <laughs> last couple of days, but um, I will. Uh, I'll try to get you an answer on that. You know, I, I, I'm ninety plus percent sure that it's not going to be any kind of issue, but uh, I just wanted to. Equal types. Was the question there, uh, Bex, the question there just about default animations, or are there any other affected uh, entities as well? Sounds maybe, okay. Um, yeah, I can ping Callum to say what particular things got moved to the CDN. I'm sure he has a list somewhere. Now, morphs aren't assets. They're just uh, they're just content that's delivered as part of the viewer install. So one thing I was thinking recently would be would be nice if we could put in would be a way to and there's been requests for this in the past too if we could put in um, a way to upload morphs. You know that that affect that affect mesh content. Um, all all our morphs now are just um, are just authored with respect to the original system avatar. We don't have a general way to do them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the morphs are in their own. You know, since they're not assets, they wouldn't have been cached the same way. I think the if you, if you look for files called I don't know dot mma or something. Like There's a fair amount of content that's just sort of baked into the viewer distribution that isn't that wasn't in the cache either. Um, you know, just kind of files get dumped in there. Probably a bunch of icons and stuff too. I think the concern was that some of the um, default animations might have been in that bundle.
Yeah, I mean, since we've been distributing that content with an open source viewer all along, um, that's why I think it's probably not an issue, but I say I've just got to do a little more digging. But I mean, yeah, if you've got the if you've got the data in the static cache, you should be able to just re-upload it if you need to. The um, so you know the the contents would just be like a .anim file or whatever. At least for animations, I'm not so sure about gestures. Yeah, I, I know there's an issue with the mesh caching. Um, I think there may already be a fix in the in the works there.
even newer cache. Hey, oh, I have voice now. Cool. Oh, good. If you keep talking, my uh, headset won't shut down. Oh. So, yeah, the new cache is... Uh... I don't have anything good to say. Besides that I can cash more than 512 meg- I can cash more than one furry club now. So are you talking about the cash size limit or something else? Uh, the cash size limit. Uh, the old VFS cash was basically limited to maybe a gigabyte on a good day if you didn't have file chunk fragmentation, but it had giant fragmentation issues due to shoving mesh inside of it, so you really had maybe have 512 megabytes on a good day. Okay, well, uh, you know, the, the that viewer is basically getting kicked back to development anyway because of the... Uh... The other issues. So, if you have any, if you have any input on it, we'd be happy to take a look. Uh, I basically rewrote the whole thing to use CIO and only open and close the file handle once. Giant. Oh yeah, there, there was a great thing. Every file write or read incurs a mutex lock, which was ping ponging between the mesh thread and the main thread and having all kinds of weird contention. Because yay, LL Singleton needs to lock a mutex every time, even though it doesn't need it, <laughs> to call a function that can be a static. Yeah, LL Singleton gets a little carried away sometimes. Yeah, the... Desingletoning function... some places where it's especially... Uh... The function to generate the path for the cache asset could be static, but was put in a singleton instead for God knows what reason. So it it it, uh, it incurred a fun little mutex lock that was ping ponging between the mesh repo thread and the main thread and a bunch of other threads. just going to keep going forward with my new cache because unmerging it is a nightmare that I don't want to go through. Okay, well, uh, yeah, the main concern is just the, um, you know, texture cache corruption on rollback, so uh, as long as you're not worried about the impact Ooh. there, I guess. Uh... Wait, texture cache, that shouldn't be a th Thing because the texture cache and the VFS, well, the replace VFS cache. Well, yeah, it shouldn't be a thing. It's, I think it's our only reasonable guess is that it has something to do with the way the texture cache size gets computed differently in the two different uh, releases, and so there's like a yeah, that that would do it. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, obviously the the texture cache itself isn't part of the new cache or the or the VFS cache. Uh, the it, it, uh, I have an idea for that. 
basically just increment the ca texture cache version in one of those viewers and that that will fix it Uh, do, do the older viewers just force a uh, redo when the cache version changes? That's yeah, it forces probably. a cache wipe to yeah. avoid things like that. Yeah, I remember we had had a mention about that, but I'm not sure if that's actually in there. Yeah, it, it's, you just need to, uh, the tech... Uh, the new cache viewer ideally should have incremented the texture cache version since it did touch how the texture cache size was kind of calculated. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably want to do that before we put out uh, 5.19 again. I think I've basically fixed all of the issues in the new cache, though. Okay. Well, if someone could turn it into a contribution, we'd be happy to take a look. As I say, we're you know having to revise the code now anyway. Yeah, there's like a few things I still want to do on it, mostly simplifying it further. Keymap next or LMR5? I don't know at this point. Um, it could even be an updated 5.19. Um, uh, we were kind of thinking about LMR5 before all of the recent kerfuffle, so we'll uh, we'll see. LMR5 would probably make people happier. It does fix a lot of rendering bugs. Yeah, and yeah, we've had a lot of requests people can actually those, see. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? It is a positive visual change that people can actually see that would make them less unhappy about the cash kerfuffle. Okay, that's something to think about. Oh, another performance issue I noticed in the new cache. The idea of shoving every single file into a single directory is terrible. File systems do not like that.
way far before Windows was getting cranky. I make Windows very cranky. I had like 150,000 files in a single directory, and then Explorer got unhappy at me. That's the way to lock up your machine. <laughs> For a good five ten minutes. Right. It, it, it was a, it was an adventure. Yeah, so you think we should be like sharding by UUID prefix or something like that? That's what I went with, like the texture Took cache it. does. Took yeah, that's what the texture cache does. I'm currently trying to figure out a better way to handle purging oversized cache because right now it basically iterates over every single file in the cache and that is slow. Yeah, I'm going with something like that, but more just going to be a little not SQLite array of structures. And just kind of dump that onto the disk. Oh, th thank you, GPU driver. Thank you for crashing. Thank you. You can still hear us. How uh, how far did you wind up sharding the? Um... Uh, yeah, I just the started it by forms. the first, uh, the first character, the UUID. So just 16 buckets. Uh, th that seems to work well enough in dividing up files that Windows doesn't get super cranky. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's about all the news for this week. Hopefully, we'll have uh, we'll have less news for the next meeting. <laughs> and uh, Firestorm will have a release out. Uh, so we're all um, we'll we'll be in touch on emails. I, I may not always show up in the third part of your meetings. These things happen at the worst time for me. Um, every Friday. Uh, but uh, so if there's anything, we could just email. Okay. Yeah, that sounds um, great. Otherwise, through my team. Yeah, Beck is great. Everybody's great. There will be an alchemy release one day. I don't know what day. You guys are still working on that? Uh, well, there's a lot of things to do still. <laughs> well, hurry up. <laughs> Our, our internal QA metric for amount of bugs that is allowable 
It's very tight. All right, we'll see you we'll next time. Thanks for coming. Uh, have a good weekend. Yeah. Bye. Oh, oh no, he fell. So yeah, yeah, I basically rewrote the whole cache, and it's suffering and misery, and I hate everything. Oh no, this isn't like a regular Wednesday. Regular Wednesday, I like sleep in... And refuse to get out of bed because it's winter time and it's cold and I hate the cold. I would rather it be 110 degrees outside. And as dry as a desert. It, it, yes. Instead, it's like as dry as a desert and freezing and I hate that. But once the new cat, well, once the cache actually works, it's quite nice because now I can cache an entire three sims of content. Instead of just one. It's very fast because I just throw hardware at problems. Can't be slow if my drive bandwidth exceeds my memory bandwidth most of the time. Uh, yeah, if you have an SSD, if you're on a spinning disk, I'm so sorry. Are those still even sold? Yes, they still make laptops with those. Ugh. It is 2021, right? <laughs> Alchemy's stance on that now is we do not support spinning discs, and if someone complains it's slow, we don't care. Smells like floppies at this point. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I do still have spinning rust in my desktop, but they're these massive 16 terabyte helium drives, and they cost like as much as my processor. Yeah, I agree, Elizabeth. Putting a spinning disk in a laptop makes no sense at this stage. I love my laptop with a spinning disk. I dropped it. It doesn't work anymore, and I don't care to fix it. I just use my MacBook lap heater. It's a bonus feature. Space heater. <laughs> it, it is currently a bonus feature. It's very cold outside, and I is no, I hate the cold. It's basically I've been bitching about the cold for three months now, and I hate it. Actually, that's an interesting metric. I'm not sure if we even know Q track of who has SSDs and who doesn't. I'll have to ask about that. Yeah, the new cache is it's quite fast on SSDs once you fix all of the horrible inefficiencies in how the I.O. is written. Which, really, that's just some bad I.O. code, that horrendous I.O. code, because C++ Kool-Aid. Yeah. Yeah, I.O. stream. Yeah, it's going to die eventually, I hope. Uh, yeah, soon enough. They, even the standards committee wants it to die in a fire. Yeah, it's been that way for oh god, uh, at least five, maybe eight years at least, I think. Yeah. Oh, oh, Beck, did you notice that the cache path was being formatted using an O string stream? Isn't that fantastic? There were ten string temporaries being created to 
formulate the path. Oh, I hate everything.